It's with us now from Los Angeles is CBSN political contributor and Republican strategist Leslie Sanchez. Leslie, thank you for being with us. You could hear in Vice President Biden's tone, he's angered by Trump. But it seems like some Hispanic leaders, from what we're hearing, uh, who advise the Republican nominee are angry as well. What can you tell us? Sure. Uh, there are several individuals immediately after Donald Trump's speech last night that were just, to use their term, disgusted. Every term I've heard this morning and last night has included words like horrible, dishonest, uh, tone deaf. Uh, the frustration was extremely palatable. And, and more importantly, they were taking action. Not only did some of these individuals resign, uh, and there's a total of about 23 that are Hispanic advisors for Trump that, that talked to him, have met privately with him, talked about mostly not only their contention about building a wall, but what to do with the undocumented individuals are here. They feel that his approach in Mexico, they were doing high fives. They thought it was a great effort by Trump to go there. But the speech in Phoenix was was really uh, the ender uh, for many of them. They felt it all of their work that they'd done to this point was all for naught and that the campaign was sincerely not listening. And as one reported to me, he said it's as if they went with the hardliners who were always in Trump's ear and ignored everything we just said. But Leslie, in, in some ways, this has been uh, Donald Trump's big issue, immigration, and, and taking a tough line on immigration has been the centerpiece of his campaign. Was it so surprising to them? What, what specifically was so surprising? What surprising was the tone. Uh, repeatedly, that's the term. It, it sounded angry. It was this dark uh, approach. And it really put a lot of hostility toward Mexican immigrants and Mexico particularly. They also were disgusted, to use their term, that they said that Mexico is going to pay for the wall again, when just hours uh, prior, he had been on stage with Peña Nieto, the ne Mexican president, saying that we really didn't get into the dynamics of who would pay for the wall. They felt it was disingenuous, that it was a political ploy, that it was grandstanding, and not a sincere effort to address a very significant issue. Uh, what's important to keep in mind is these are individuals who have been party loyalists for three decades. They mm -hmm. raise money. Uh, they mobilize grassroots on the ground. And they're sincere patriots. Uh, they've taken a tremendous amount of political heat by supporting the Trump campaign. But they feel there's better to be on the inside influencing than on the outside yelling. But this was really, for many of them, and it, the number may get to half, as one told me today, uh, by the end of the day, have really decided to walk away. Others are not going to publicly leave, but they no longer want to be associated with the campaign. But I do find it interesting, those people who uh, possibly are walking away, they're not going to vote for Hillary Clinton. No. Under no, any circumstances. No. Right, so uh, right, does right, it matter? Right, right. Uh, it does matter because they're, uh, the most interesting part of that is these are individuals who raise a lot of money. Um, so not only are they going to stop putting money in those coffers, they're really going to stand down when it comes time to get out the vote. Uh, they feel, uh, and, and what's also interesting is they've continued to write personal uh, 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 t trying to uh, letters to the campaign, asking them to please take a different approach, please soften the language. But all of them feel um, that I've spoken to this morning that it's all for naught. Um, so I do think we got to follow the money here. This is about dollars and resources and time when it comes to the campaign operation in November. Do you think Donald Trump now could flip flop on this, Leslie? That's what they think he did. They consistently but say. But could he do it again? Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> they, it's so wishy washy. Like one second, you know, we're going to soften the approach. And there is not disagreement. These are individuals who helped write a lot of the policy. Policy statements that he advocated when he was in Mexico. E verify, even things you heard in the speech when he talked about E verify, ending sanctuary cities, um, building the wall or some sort of enforcement of the border, dealing with criminal aliens, all in agreement. There's not disagreement there. It was the tone, it was the dehumanizing, it was the unrealistic idea of self deportation with the other individuals who are not criminal or violent, undocumented immigrants. What to do with these people? And that is the part that is the most frustrating and hangering it, uh, for these folks is that he doesn't have compassion or a real solution and they just won't tolerate it. What is his strategy here? As you said, there's this feeling that he's doing this flip-flopping hours after he meets with the Mexican president and seems to take this softer tone. He comes right. out and makes this hard line speech. Who is he trying to appeal to at this point? Uh, clearly trying to appeal to the base. I mean, I don't feel this was ever about closing that Latino gap. Um, 
because many Latinos have already made up their mind. The negatives are really high in the Hispanic community, just like with the non-Hispanic community. But there are some, and there are Latinos who support Trump in his strong border security enforcement approach. It's, the, it's always coming down to tone. If, if Trump can win on securing the border, no amnesty, but some sort of a compassionate approach when it comes to legalization of individuals who want to work here, pay taxes, not criminal aliens, what do we do about them, handle the dreamer issue, the compassionate approach that's sensible, that enforces our economy and the economic needs of the country. That's where we want to be, uh, I think, as individuals who are concerned about this issue. That's completely distant uh, past from where Trump has ever even tried to be. All right, Leslie Sanchez, always a great conversation. Thanks for being with <laughs> Thank us. Thank you. Thank you.